In today's music lesson, I'm going to show you how to write metal breakdowns that don't suck for heavy music. First, here's a little sample of the breakdown we're going to create today. So throughout the lesson, I'm going to start with the very simplest form of a metalcore breakdown and then slowly increase complexity and interest as we go. Funny enough, I went into Google and I typed, what is a breakdown? To me, a breakdown is when the guitars and the drums are syncopated in a rhythmic form. It could go from very simple and very effective or very complex and very effective. But of course, you can under and overdo it. So I have a rhythm in mind and it's going to go like this. I'm basically going to match the rhythm of the guitars, the dun dun, with the kick drum and then occasionally the snare depending on if it overlaps with the kick. First thing I always do with breakdowns is to set the tempo with the cymbals. I'm going to double time it for right now because what's also really popular is to keep the cymbal going a little quicker and then slower the second time around. The next step that I'll do is add the snare where I imagine it to be and it helps form the whole rhythm. So probably there. So now let's syncopate the guitars with the kick drum. Wrong. One, two, three, four, one, two. And then it's the exact same thing on guitar, so I'm just gonna copy and paste that kick pattern. Then my final step with the breakdowns is to add accent crashes. So on the first one, I always add one. Since I'm on the China on the right side, I'll do a left crash just to fill the stereo image. The second time around, I'm gonna make these cymbals half time. It just makes it a little bit more open and it's up to you whether you find that heavier or the faster one. So our next step is to add more chugs. If you may have noticed, it's the exact same guitar part copied and pasted. So let's make it a little bit more interesting by changing it slightly every time around. And yeah, I use the same instrument for guitar and bass. Since I'm tuned so low to double drop A, I don't want to go too low with the bass because it'll just become flub. So now let's syncopate that little section with the drums again. And that's where we can decide if we want to take that kick drum out or leave it in. So by using something like triplets to change up the meter or to change up the feel really makes a difference in your breakdown to make it a little bit more interesting so it's not so predictable. Very popular in like deathcore and thaw. Thaw is constantly changing the meter. Cool, and then again, let's syncopate the drums with that. So I like that because the rest of the breakdown isn't triplet, so when the triplet happens, it makes it a lot more exciting. So now to bring it to level four, let's change the type of chugs that we're doing. So we can obviously keep it tight, we can make it tighter by doing the whole gent thing of moving your palm slowly towards the neck. But to me, that's not the kind of vibe I'm going for. I want to change the chug to something a little heavier, like that typical death chord sound, which is basically a one zero zero chord. With these type of chugs, I hear it really often that there's not enough gain and the chug doesn't sustain or you can hear it dying out. Nobody wants to hear it die out. So if you're doing this kind of part, I would just say turn the preamp or the gain up. And then again, I'm just gonna put that triplet. And let's choke the end just to make it a little more exciting. That sounds like an end of a song. Cool, so now we can make it even more interesting by adding the occasional bend. On the top string, of course. That will sound the heaviest. I like. I think I like fret eight for this. You always want to make sure that your bends are in tune. It's really annoying, but it sounds so much better when you have two in tune performances. 
That works for me. If you're interested in learning how to record guitars professionally, the way that I've done it for years and the way that I've learned from some of the best engineers, check out this video right here. So this next step has become a lot more popular in heavy music. Back when I was starting with structures, it wasn't as popular as it is nowadays, and that's adding sounds to your breakdowns. So by sounds, I mean things that aren't notes and things that aren't chugs or chords. Sounds like pick scrapes, the upwards rakes, harmonics, backwards scrapes. It's up to you to develop your own style and to learn your own sounds and fill up your Pokedex basically with different sounds. I'm gonna go through and just add the ones that I know that I like. Right there. If you want to learn any of the sounds that I just did, check out this video right here where I go over five of my favorite sounds for metal music. The next step is one that I feel is very overlooked in writing music in general, whether it's metal or pop or R&B or any style of music, and that's leaving pauses or breaks. I hear it right before the breakdown slows down, and I think by leaving a pause and by leaving some sort of cymbal choke, when that breakdown comes in, it'll be even heavier. So right now it sounds like this. And what I'm hearing is a stop basically right there. Adding some sort of snare flam almost always seems to do it for me. And then we can turn that into like a little tom fill. So instead of those two kicks, it's as simple as just moving those kicks to a tom instead. I don't know about you, but to me that sounds significantly heavier. This is very popular in Thal, is to take our cymbal and put it in a placement that you wouldn't necessarily expect. So what I find to help a lot is basically split the difference between the full-time symbol and the half-time symbol. And what that leaves us with is instead of having this symbol here, and instead of leaving it there, we're going to take this one and move it over to split the difference. Same thing with that one. We'll take all of those out. So now let's listen to it. So it's pretty crazy, it makes it sound like we're almost in triplet mode or it changes the meter. It almost sounds like it's a different BPM or tempo. Doing that for like a moment is pretty cool. We can actually take the snare and put it in a spot that it's not meant to be or not expected to be. And by doing this, we're gonna throw the listener off guard. So this one right here, I wanna hear on the off beat. And maybe a kick as well where the snare was. So now we have. That's pretty cool. I syncopated that extra bend with a kick and then added two little kicks before that offbeat snare. I also just made it so that the is syncopated with the drums with a little fill. Very simple, but it adds a lot since there aren't very many toms in this breakdown or in breakdowns in general. It kind of just, to me, makes it more interesting. One of the last things that we can do to a breakdown to really sell it is to add an 808 or bass drop at the beginning or in the middle or in a select moment. So the very last thing that we can do to our breakdown to bring some production value to it is to add some sort of lead or ambient guitar. What's very popular is to add either like a drony kind of note that's like just tremolo picking and then semitones or bending it. Or we can add some sort of picking thing. I kind of like the second half without a lead, and I actually think I like the picking lead more than the tremolo one. Obviously, use your discretion. You can also do like some sort of tapping lead, like. Which actually might be better. Let's try that, actually.
I think the tapping one wins. All right, sweet. So now that we've gone from our very simplest form, add more chugs, did the triplets, bends, noises, stops, cymbal changes, and lead guitar in 808, here's what we're left off with. So that's super heavy, but as I've said in previous videos, a breakdown is only as strong as its buildup. So if you want to learn nine of my favorite buildups that I feel are the strongest, check out this video right here. And if not, I appreciate you watching this one anyways. Thank you so much. If you found any use in this, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know anything that you'd like me to cover in future videos down in the comments below. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. See ya.